Today, we'll teach you five ways to make a long pass. So if you want the technique to be the midfield maestro and find your teammates even with your eyes closed, you should definitely keep watching. First up, we have the ping, which is a long, direct and driven pass that flies more or less straight towards its target. A good ping pass is not this soft and balloony ball that has a lot of airtime. No, a good ping pass is powerful, it has purpose, and it only spends as much time in the air as it needs. And the thing is that the ping might look impressive and really difficult to master, but once your body understands the technique, it's actually not. See, the ping is in essence just a long, lofted, backspin pass that optimally at least doesn't have any swerve to it and the way you go about it is that if you want to hit it that way you want to approach the ball in a 45 degree ish angle your plant foot should be pointing more or less towards the target and then when you approach the ball you want to lock that angle that means tightening up your ankle making it nice and firm so your foot doesn't flap around that doesn't give any nice passes at all now also when you then want to hit the ball, you need to make sure that you hit the ball with this bony part on the top of the instep. You can feel it's a little bit harder than the rest of the foot, and that is the key for the ping pass. Then you want to connect with the ball right down the middle, but also a little bit below the middle to make sure you get that backspin. But the reason for hitting it straight through the middle is that that way you don't create any swerve. So when you then hit it, you also want a really short follow through. Again, to make sure you don't generate any spin by bringing the foot across your body, but also to make sure that you get that very powerful zingy connection with the ball. And actually, you don't need to just blast it to get power. It's all about the technique here. So again, make sure to hit that bony part, learn that technique, and you'll be golden. Boom. Ping. Now on the other side of the scale to the ping pass, we have the swerve pass, which as you've guessed, it has a lot of spin and the pass itself actually bends. And it's something you can use to make a pass over or around the defense for your teammate to run into. Now let's say that I want to make a swerve pass or a, a, a curve pass, whatever you want to call it, to my teammate who's um, 20 meters behind you guys in the camera. Now then the way I approach the ball, again, 45 degree angle, but my plant foot is not straight at you guys. No, it's like 30 degrees away from where I want to hit the ball. And also, the way I approach the ball, again, I lock my ankle, then I hit the ball on the lower side, but then also I hit it more or less on the opposite side to where I want the ball to go. Because that way, I can allow my foot to hit the ball and almost brush the side of the ball and then follow through all the way across my body. That's gonna help you generating that spin. Now that's absolutely vital. You basically just need to do it a lot so you practice the direction, the amount of lift, and of course getting the right amount of spin so your teammates can run right into it. Next up we have the low driven pass, which is great for situations where there's a very straight and direct path between you and the receiver. So no defenders to come in and take the ball away. Now this is for situations where you would normally make a traditional inside of the foot pass, but where the distance is much bigger. And this is where the low driven pass is great because it's much more powerful and it gets to the target faster and thus it's harder to intercept. Now the key for this pass is that you keep it low as the name suggests. There's a reason people call this the mole killer. You want it to skid off the surface of the grass, just like, like that. Powerful, really, really low. And the technique here is that basically, oh, it's coming back, nice. The technique is that just like on the ping, you want to hit the ball with that bony part of the foot. But instead of hitting it low, you hit it a little bit above the middle to make sure that it doesn't go into the air. Now also the follow through needs to be, I mean, I want to say non-existent, but it needs to be ultra, ultra short. It should just kiss the ball and then bounce back. That way you just make sure it becomes super pingy, very, very sharp and precise. The only thing you shouldn't do is hit the ball too much on top because that way it starts bouncing and it might end up over there somewhere instead of in the goal. Case in point, 
See? Shouldn't do it that way. Low, driven, not like that crap. The next technique we want to take a look at is the Trivella or the banana shot. Uh, banana. Basically what Roberto Carlos used to score that free kick in 1997. Now, in essence, this is the exact opposite of the swerve pass because uh, instead of, if I want to pass over there, I could do it with my left, but my left sucks. So I would probably rather go for the Trevella hitting the ball on the opposite side. Now here, everything comes from this motion of pointing my toes down, bending my foot a little inwards, and then hitting the ball again on the lower middle part, but on the other side of the ball to where I want it to go. Now here, the key is to plant your foot a little bit further away so there's room for your foot to come in, Point it inwards, hit the ball, brush the side, and then follow through across your body. And hopefully, you will get that banana curve on it, and your teammate will run into it. Hopefully. Then we have the side volley, which is great if the ball is coming from the air, you've taken it down on the chest, it's bouncing, and you don't have time to kill it on the ground. Take the touch, set yourself up for the ping, None of that stuff. You just want to play the pass right now. This is where the half volley or the side volley is really, really good. Now, what you need to focus on here is control. The power will come on its own. So control is key here. You want to hit the ball on the very top part of the foot. And then it's important that you hit it just below the middle. If you hit it too low, you're going to generate a lot of backspin. It's just going to go straight up into the air if you kind of slice it from below. Also, don't hit it on the top. You're just going to hit it down in the ground and that's going to be a really like That doesn't really work, I guess. I've never seen it work at least. Now, what's also important is your stance. So when you approach the ball, you lean a little bit and if you can try and open your leg up just a little bit, it's easier to get that swing from your foot. Of course, it's difficult. It's about timing, it's about the technique. But remember, focus on the technique, not on the power, and it'll come with training. And actually, that applies to all of the techniques, guys. They're pretty difficult to master, so you need to train a lot, either on your own or with a friend. But you need to train up until that point where the techniques become second nature. They become a natural thing to do for you, where you don't think about them, you just do it. And that's the point where this training will make a difference. You become that long passing master that you want to be, right? But which technique should we teach you next? As always, let me know in the comment section right down below. And then consider going and gearing up, upgrading your X-Speed flows to the latest colorway, or grabbing yourself a new football. You know where to go. Link to unisportstore.com is right over there. Of course, also, if you had a good time with this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel with the notifications on for more videos on how you can improve as a footballer. And if you want those right away, there's also a pretty wicked playlist right down there that you should definitely check out. And with those words, guys, I'll be signing off. Cheerio.